Hey, this is Kenneth, and today, to continue talking about repeaters, let's talk about filters. Uh, before we start talking about actual different types of filters, let's talk about the plots I'm going to be showing them on, which are called Bode magnitude plots. Essentially what this, this is, is the x-axis is frequency, and the y-axis is the magnitude of the signal passed through a filter, right? And so at 100%, you know, so a, a perfect conductor or perfect feed line would be a flat line on the Bode plot in that 100% of the signal would go through at every single different wavelength. Um, a, it tends to be a logarithmic scale on the y-axis and traditionally in academia the frequency is also logarithmic but when you actually look at true measurements out of service monitors or things like that the frequency would tend to be you know linear so it'd be you know 440, 445, 450, 455, 460, something like that right but so um, you know this would be a hundred percent through then if you were to you know take take a step down it would be you know fifty percent and then it would be twenty five percent etc right so let's talk about the the four different classes of filters right so the first class of filter is called a low pass filter what this means is that it passes low frequencies and blocks high frequencies so if we say that you know the middle here is our cutoff frequency which is the frequency where it you know changes from a pass to a not pass. Um, a perfect low pass filter would have 100% transmission or you know 0 dB of loss between zero frequency and this cutoff frequency right and then in an ideal you know in an ideal world this would then suddenly jump down all the way to infinite loss along here um, in reality what you tend to do see is what is a roll off like this, right? And so a low-pass filter will pass the low frequencies and start to block high frequencies. Second type is called a high-pass filter. It's the opposite in that it passes high frequencies and blocks low frequencies. So you've got high frequencies passed and lower frequencies blocked. You then have what's called a band-pass filter where it passes a single band or range of frequency and then will reject in both directions like that and then like that All right so that's called a band pass filter and then finally this is the one that doesn't tend to have a good set of names it's called a band reject or it's called a band notch or a band stop or just a notch filter and it's essentially the opposite of the band pass filter it passes all frequencies except for some relatively narrow range that it, it notches out or stops just that one little bit. Now talking about all these together, the two that are, tend to be the most relevant for repeaters are the band pass and the band reject filters. Um, all of these filters, typically, if you were to build these out of like a resistor and a capacitor, um, they they tend to they, they, the roll off here tends to be you know what's called the first order, or 10 dB or 10 decibels per decade. So if you go from you know 40 megahertz to 400 megahertz, you know so if if the cutoff frequency here was 40 megahertz, you know 10 dB loss later would be uh, 400 megahertz, which is a huge difference. In repeaters, we're talking about the difference between the, you know, so like looking at, looking at a, a frequency we want to pass on the reject and a frequency we want to block on the reject, the difference between these two frequencies tends to only be something on the order of 1%. And 1% is an extremely close spacing, it's like 440 times versus 445. Um, this is why you won't see very many repeaters built with filters out of just capacitors and inductors because to get that sort of quality on a, you know, in-band repeater, like a UHF repeater, we're talking about thousands of capacitors and inductors that you would need. The loss would be ridiculous and it just, it wouldn't work, 
right? And so that's so when we talk about these, we're in repeaters. We usually will build these out of resonant cavities, right? And I'll show you that later. But the the two that you use the most are called the, are the band pass and the band reject. And where you would use this is on the combiner between your transmit antenna, so a uh, transmit radio, and your receive radio. Right, so in the repeater you've got your transmitter and you've got your receiver. Um, back here you've got your controller, which ties them together audio-wise. Right, so the repeater is listening on one, one frequency, feeds audio into the controller, the controller then decides when appropriate to key up the transmitter and send the audio back out. Right, and so what we want to use the filters for is to take the transmitted frequency and the received frequency and tie them back together into a single antenna. You know, so again, using the example of the W6 TDM repeater that I'm an admin on, the transmit frequency is 440.150, and the receive frequency is 445.150. Right, and so what we need is a filter here after the transmitter, a T. Another filter here in front of the receiver, and then the antenna itself. So what this filter right here needs to do is it needs to stop 445 megahertz. This filter right here needs to stop 440 megahertz, right? Because if this filter didn't block out the transmit frequency, the receiver would get completely swamped out or um, overloaded or desensed by the transmitter because the transmitter is transmitting on something on the order of a million times stronger than the signals that the receiver is trying to get from your remote handhelds, your remote, remote users. And so this filter right here to block out the transmit is very important and a typical a typical uh, required requirement is you would need uh, 70 decibels of suppression of the transmit frequency what's kind of straight uh, what isn't immediately obvious is why we then on the transit side need to stop the receive frequency and there's kind of two parts to this first you um, you want to get the impedance match correct at 445 megahertz at 445 megahertz, this 50 ohm load wants to see a 50 ohm source from the antenna without the transmit 50 ohms being wired in parallel. So by making this block 445 megahertz, it makes this effectively disappear at 445 megahertz. It's also important because the transmitter isn't perfect. So if we if we looked at the spectrum of this transmitter, so here is 440 megahertz, right? So in an ideal world, we we would see a lot of power at this one frequency, and this should be what 20 about you know 15 to 25 kilohertz wide, um, and you know so that's that's your FM signal. Um, that just is set at about uh, 11, 11 watts, I think is the magnitude we, we set up on it. So in an ideal world, the transmit would look like that. In reality, um, you have these spurs kind of hanging off the side. They're relatively low. The FCC mandates that they um, fall below a certain magnitude. But even still, out here at 445, there still is an appreciable amount of power from the transmitter um, at that frequency. And so we want to notch that out so the receiver doesn't have to deal with any of this garbage coming from the transmitter um, to not degrade its performance. Right? So this is the bare minimum. We 
in, at the very bare minimum, the transmitter fil filter here in the duplexer, right? So when we talk about a duplexer, what we're talking about is generally this section here. The bare minimum, it needs to stop 445. And at the bare minimum, this filter needs to stop 440. Going back to our filter definitions up here, the appropriate filter would be the band notch filter here. In, act, you know, in actual actuality, what this looks like is something like this. This is a what's called a mobile notch duplexer for UHF. Um, this one came out of a GR1225 repeater, which we'll show, I'll show later in this series. But what it consists of is six resonant cavities, right? So there's three on this side and three on this side that are internally have a rod through them and a tuning stub so that you can make it look like it's a stub cavity and so that your receiver here can be hooked up to the antenna and the transmitter can be hooked up to the antenna and then you tune, you screw these, these uh, little set screws here in and out to set the exact frequencies you want for your system right there. These, repeater, these duplexers tend to not be particularly good. They're relatively low cost, and most importantly, they are very, very small, right? This, this is absolutely tiny compared to the, I mean, a typical UHF cavity will look something more like this size, and that's per cavity. So you would have four or six pretty good size, you know, milk jug sized cavities um, for a single repeater. The problem here is that this only does the absolute bare minimum, which is notch out the opposite frequency, right? And so this set, set of three, three filters is only notching out this frequency. And this set of three filters is only notching out this frequency. This is okay when you're in a sterile environment that only consists of this one radio system, which if you're on the top of a mountain, if you're on the top of a mountain in a field, or if you're at you know, a festival where there's nothing else there, this is perfectly fine. You go into some place like a RF radio site um, at the top of an important mountain with you know, 20 different radio systems there, and this breaks down for a number of reasons. Um, only looking at the uh, RF, uh, the filter, at the duplexer filter problem with that, is since you're only notching out your one specific frequency, all of the other frequencies at the radio site are still getting through. And so for permanent installs and higher quality repeater systems, you would tend to use what's called a band pass reject filter, which is both a pass and a reject in a single filter. And so what it would look like is you'd have your band pass and you also have a specific, you know, a specific notch right there. It would roll off like this. And so this would be our transmit frequency here. And this would be our receive frequency. And then, you know, on the opposite, you would then swap the pass and the reject on the other side to get the same performance. Um, these tend to be much more expensive filters. And I don't have one convenient to show you here. But that's kind of an overview of the different issues that we see when we're trying to set up this basic antenna combiner here. Um, in the next video, we will talk about what are called circulators, which you could, you wouldn't, I mean, if you're using a mobile duplexer like this, a circulator isn't worth the trouble. But if you were to actually use a uh, band pass notch, cavity duplexer, then you would want to generally use that with what's called a circulator or an isolator, to, which gives you a couple more advantages. We'll talk about that in the next video. For now, um, that this is a basic duplexer, and I'm about to upload a video given this weekend by my buddy Marcel on tuning this duplexer, so if, of course you'll get much more information out of his talk. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.